So let's get into discussing Vantage's station bus. The Vantage station bus is the primary wired interconnection between devices on a Vantage system, and it is a vital part of the system. So understanding its purpose and properties is very important. It will enable you to be able to quickly and correctly plan a system and implement a successful infusion system. So let's get into our objectives. We're going to talk about the Vantage station bus, its purposes and its characteristics. We'll talk about some of the different wirelink stations or describe a few of those stations. And then we'll talk about bus wiring topology. And we'll cover six applicable rules that will help you maintain a good stable system. And then we'll show you uh, briefly how to do some connections on the controller with, between the keypad and the station bus. Most advantages stations are designed to work with the Wirelink station bus. As you see on the right hand side, you'll see all the Vantage objects that you can select that are Wirelink stations. Keypads, scene point dimmers, uh, Equinox LCD keypads, uh, power dimmers, thermostats, uh, all different types of stations are available. So let's get into the wiring topology. Now, first off, the topology is completely open. You can branch off with Vantage's station bus however you like. You can daisy chain it, star it. Um, the one thing you do want to avoid is creating a loop. Other than that, you can branch this off in any way that you'd like. So let's talk about termination. There are no bus terminations required with the Vantage station bus. And so that makes it easy when you're installing keypads and stations. You don't have to focus on which one is going to be the end or the last of a run. Let's get into the rules. Now, rule number one, you have a 2,000 maximum wire per station bus run. Notice you have two of those runs on each of the terminal boards. And so you have a maximum of 4,000 per infusion controller. So as you see from this diagram, I can go anything as far as 500 and 500 and another run of 1,000 on one side and, and add up to the other 2,000 on the other side, and I'm within this rule. The second rule is 1,000 foot maximum distance. So notice the difference between back to jumping back to rule one, where the two examples show the longest run being 1,000 feet. I didn't go 2,000 feet or 1,500 feet on one and then 500 on the other. That is not applicable because of rule two. So back to rule two, I have a maximum distance of a thousand feet. So once again, as you see here, I can star out at say 700 feet and I go 300 all different directions as long as I don't max out that thousand foot distance. With this example, you can see that my total is really only up to 1600 of the 2000. And so that would give me the ability to add another run of up to 400 feet with this. And this keeps me within the rule, both rules one and two of 2000 and the 1000. So let's talk about rule number three, the maximum number of stations. This is limited by the power requirement and hard count, whichever limit is reached first. So let's take a look. 24 volt, and we've mentioned this earlier in the prior class about the controllers. The 24 volt controller has a 35 watt power supply and has a maximum of 100 stations. You are more likely to reach the maximum of the 35 watts than the 100 stations because a good majority of our stations will draw more on those 50 stations per run than the 35 watts is going to allow. So we have the 36 volt. Now this has 120 watts. So notice I am going to more likely reach the 120 stations maximum before I reach the 120 watts maximum because of the larger power supplies that are available. This means that I have 60 watts to work with on each one of those station bus runs. So let's talk about now rule number four. Do not create any loops. I mentioned that earlier. In this diagram, as I'm going through the house and I'm wiring up, doing a daisy chain run all the way around, I could run a back end loop to kind of try to protect myself. But if that wire gets landed at back at the head end, then it would create a loop. And since we don't have any terminations, it would strain the uh, station bus and the communication protocol. So we don't recommend creating loops. Now, if you're going to create a little backup loop, you are okay to do that, but don't think that it is a perfect catch-all. 
Um, notice that if I wired a house perfectly as one complete entire daisy chain, then a backup loop would protect me in case a wire got cut. But since we have such an open topology, most people do not wire in a perfect daisy chain. You take the ability to make the quickest run to whichever keypad station you can. And so you daisy chain, you star, you break those runs off, and so then you lose that protection that a backup loop would create for you. And so we recommend a better scenario would be to go in, get your house wired up and wire nut everything together and make sure that you can see the voltage across the entire bus. Then when the sheet rockers come in and close that up, before they even tape and mud, go back in and verify that you do not have any uh, bus run problems where it's been terminated or broken. If you do, then it's easy to be able to track down where that break would be in your line. Then you can get it repaired, um, which would save you and the homeowner and the contractor time and money with the project. So let's talk about rule number five. We want you to use Vantage spec wire. Now notice I don't say use Vantage wire, although Vantage wire is within our spec, but we want to make sure that this is very clear. Using the correct wire is important. So let's go over the reasons why. First off, it's a 16 gauge two conductor. Well, hey, that sounds a lot like a speaker wire. Well, let's keep looking at it. It is stranded, non-shielded, okay, still sounds a little bit like some speaker wire that's available out there. Oh, but here we have low capacitance, maximum 30 picofarads. Now that is not what most your typical speaker wire has capability out there. In fact, there's some manufacturers out there who label their wire saying that it is Vantage and meeting Vantage's spec, which is the 600 volt rated for the sheathing, but it doesn't make the low capacitance and this is very important low capacitance so let me describe this for you when you take Vantage station bus and you put a tone generator next to it what sound do you hear you hear a, a noise a did it and then there's a pause and then there's a did it and it does that over and over again what's happening is is that Vantage's stations all have a capacitor built into it so what we're doing is we are sending, and this is the magic of how Vantage's station bus works, we send power, then we send data, then we send power, then we send data over and over again, billions of times in the life of that product. And we're charging and recharging the capacitor in those stations. So guess what happens if you use a wire that doesn't have the low capacitance? That's right. It absorbs the power and it creates problems for you and your project. In fact, if you notice, rules one through three will be cut in half when you do not use the Vantage spec wire. That is a big deal. So saving yourself a little bit of money by not getting the correct wire will hurt you and your project in the end. So let's talk about rule number six, avoid interference. Maintain a 12 inch separation from all high voltage wires Make sure you're crossing at 90 degree angles and then getting away from that wire. And then avoid parallel runs with speaker wire. Some guys don't even think about this one. Remember that noise I was just describing. Did it pause? Did it pause? You can sometimes hear that over speakers if you've made long runs where it's very tight together with that speaker wire. So we're recommending you avoid those and avoid that potential problem. So let's talk about installation of a Vantage station on the station bus. With the keypad or LCD keypad that I have here, this Equinox 4.0, if you notice on the back side and you look on the cut sheet here, you'll see that the station bus has two pins that get connected up with the pigtail. If you look closely on the pigtail or on the back of the station, you will notice that there is nothing that calls out polarity. That means Vantage Station Bus is non-polarized. So you don't have to have red to red and black to black. It doesn't matter when I go to wire nut this together. Now, logic, just so that there's not any confusion or questions later and somebody's going into service, might suggest that you would want to wire nut all your reds together and all your blacks together. Um, but it is not necessarily a requirement since Vantage's Station Bus is not polarized. So you go ahead and you take your Vantage 
16-2 conductor wire. You put that together on your pigtail, wire nut it either side. There's not a polarization. Then once that's wire nutted together, you slip that into the back of the station and it clip locks itself into place. So we're going to jump back to rule number three slide so that you can see the uh, termination a little bit easier as I zoom in on this board. You'll notice that you have the two runs that were described earlier and then you have no positive or negative mark. Once again, it is not polarized. So very simply, you stick your two wires in. If you have a whole bunch of uh, several different daisy chains and runs brought together at this location, you would wire nut those together in the panel and then bring up the one run, connect it up to either run one or two, and that is how you simply add a station bus run on the infusion controller terminal board.